When you're designing websites in Webflow, quite often it's nice to embellish your main navigation with a bit of iconography. It also gives you the opportunity to compress top menu items on the desktop when it can be quite busy and you have limited space to work with. So what we're going to do as an example here is we're going to replace this home button with a home icon that appears on the desktop version in place of text. At the same time, in the mobile view, we want to show both the icon and the text adjacently because the icon by itself doesn't look very clearly as a clickable item in the mobile menu. Let's get started. So the first thing we want to do is find an icon that suits our purposes. And there are a lot of different resources you can use. I prefer to use SVG based icons because of the clarity and resolution that they have as vector graphics and also because there's a lot of configurability that you can give them in terms of coloring and let me show you a demonstration of that. I actually want to find a home icon of a small house which is exactly the same color red as that current home button. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to select the color using a, a free desktop tool to capture it. And I've now got my, uh, the tool is named Pick Pick, by the way. If you're curious, I really quite like it. It's got a lot of capabilities. I'm gonna copy this HTML color. And now I'm gonna go locate a home that, uh, that I like the style of. Now, one of my favorite re resources, particularly for SVG artwork, is Flat Icon. And I'll show you why. First, I'm gonna search for the icon I want. Here we go, we've got 20,000 homes to search from. I'm gonna scroll down to find one that stands out to me as a, a piece of artwork that I find compelling and interesting. This one's pretty nice, I quite like it. <coughs> now you may get an ad popping up at times, but uh, unless you've clicked on uh, something that's an icon that's part of their Shutterstock partner collection, you're not going to need to pay anything for these icons. Now you can see here, I'm looking at the icon I want. I have the option to download this free icon in SVG format. I'm gonna click on that. If I scroll down, I see I have the ability to choose the color that I want. So as I change these colors, I can see that the SVG is being modified. It's one of the great things about SVG. Now this is a good red, but I want precisely my color red. So I'm actually going to select and paste in the specific color of red that I've got. Now if I want to click outside of this box, you can see it's been applied. And at this point, I have the opportunity to download my specially colored SVG. I've already copied this and saved it for later referencing on the website. We definitely wanna support these authors. And I'm gonna do my free download. Now at this point, I've simply downloaded the icon to my hard drive and I have uploaded it into the Webflow site assets. And I've skipped that process to move on more quickly. So now that we have this icon in our assets, we can make use of it. First, I'm gonna to go to my main navigation. I'm gonna have a look at it. You can see here in the navigation menu, I've got navigation links, which are link blocks, which are styled a particular way for navigational purposes. I've also got drop down menus, which are these more complicated constructions, which allow me to, to build stylized pop-up menus. And what I'm wanting in this case is essentially a navigation link but a slightly specialized version of a navigation link. So I'm gonna start at the navigation, I'll, I'll, I'll start with the navigation link selected so that this will be inserted right after it. And I'm going to create a link block. Drop the link block in. Now, because I'm working with a symbol here, I absolutely need to double click it each time to re-enter it. Got my link block. And I'm gonna give my link block a slightly different class name than navigation link. I'm gonna call it icon navigation link because we need to style it a bit differently. In fact, to make this just as easy as possible, I'm gonna do this a slight. Slight. 
Now to make this as easy on ourselves as possible, what I'm gonna do is first class this as a navigation link. And then I'm gonna make a copy of that class. I'm gonna duplicate it to create a different version which I'm gonna call icon navigation link. Now I've already created icon navigation link so you see an error here, but let's go ahead and, and apply that. Now to make this as easy as possible on ourselves, I'm gonna borrow the styling of navigation link by applying that style to my link block, and then I'm going to clone the style and make some modifications to it. So the first thing we're gonna do is apply a navigation link, and then I'm gonna copy the style by duplicating the class. I'm gonna create a second version of this, which I'm gonna call icon navigation link. Now I've got a style that's essentially the same but it's going to behave a bit differently. You could also subclass it, but for now I'm going to keep it separate. Now inside of this new icon navigation link, I actually need to have two elements. One is my image, which we're gonna drop in now. And I need to open my navigation symbol again. And the second thing I need in here is a text block to represent the the label for the item. Open my navigation symbol again, and I can see all of these items are there. This is in the correct positioning of the bar, but obviously it's nowhere near the styling I want. It did, however, pick up quite a bit of the styling elements that I want, such as the font and sizing details. Now, for this image, let's go ahead and, and drop in our artwork so that this is ready to go. I'm gonna choose an image from our asset manager, got home and obviously we don't want it that big we're gonna make it 16 by 16 pixels and start with that see how it works it's a much more reasonable size now we're gonna to go to our icon navigation link and we're gonna apply a few things first thing we're gonna do we want to remove that underline so we're gonna remove that here we also need to adjust the position of these items in relation to each other the simplest way to do that is that we're going to take this container and we're gonna set it as a flex. And we're gonna set it as a flex with left justified and vertically centered. You can see that the icon shifted just a little bit there, which works quite well. Now, this is called icon navigation link. We're actually gonna apply something to our image. We're gonna apply a class there as well. We're gonna call it icon very easy to remember and the only reason is that we want to add a little bit of space to the right of it between it and our text. For now I'm not going to worry about text coloring but I do obviously need to change the text content to home. And now our icon is essentially built. We're not going to worry too much about more styling at this point but let's get it to, to operate properly in the menu. So the first thing that we need to do is we need to go ahead and apply our, our link location, make it a home button, there we go. And because it's now the current item, you can see that it has now picked up the behaviors of the currently selected menu item automatically, which is, which is quite nice. Unfortunately, we cannot do that with the icon as well. There's no automated way to propagate SVG colors from CSS yet in Webflow, but I'm very hopeful. I've actually put in a wish list item with the hopes that SVG specific support will become available. It'll be very powerful for this type of work. Now, the next thing we wanna do, of course, is bring this into our menu. Now, let's have a look at what configuration settings we have here. We've got margins of 20 inside. There's not too much else to say. Our font and so on is already set perfectly. So let's go ahead and remove this. And let's have a look here. Now the styling is a little different because it's a flex. And we do have this on our icon navigation link. 
So we're gonna go ahead, we're gonna take ourselves out of the current selector to make sure it's always applied, even when it's not currently selected. And we're gonna set each of these to 20. Now you can hold down the shift key while you drag if you wanna apply the same setting to all of these, and we're looking pretty good spacing wise. Now obviously because it's a flex, it's behaving a little bit like a block in that it's taking full width. So the next thing we need to do is to force these items to arrange properly with everything else. And the way we're gonna do that is to select the parent, which is navigation menu. You can see as I hover over it, it's the most immediate wrapper of all of the navigation items. I'm gonna select that, and I'm also gonna turn that into a flex. And same thing, left justified, and this is absolutely fine. We're gonna stretch top and bottom. And we're looking pretty good. We've actually got everything we need. Spacing and sizing aside, we'll make some modifications there later. But we've got our menu item in the menu, and it is all linked up. Now let's let's give this a go and see if it's functionally behaving well. So I've got my drop down menus. I'm gonna switch to another menu. You can see that the red icon is going to be persistent. We may actually wanna change that to something else for stylistic reasons, or we may wanna make the home always show as red. There are a lot of different options. I haven't paid too much attention to the styling on this. And when it's selected, it appears red currently. So everything is functioning just fine. Now the next thing we wanna do, let's go back to our preview. Let's have a look at what the mobile view looks like. Now you can see here, this isn't too bad. We've got the icon, but you can see that the icon is further left than the text, which is quite convenient. The text is actually positioning uh, in a particular place. So we need to do a little bit of adjustment there, but otherwise it's, it's, it's reasonably functional. It looks lined up. So we're not too far away from completing this. Let's go back to our desktop view. Now one of the advantages of having this as a multi-part component is that I can choose the visibility of each element of my menu object by breakpoint. So one of the things I wanna do for the purposes of this website design is I don't want the text for home to appear when I'm at the desktop breakpoint. And the reason very simply is space. So I've basically removed that, shrunk it down. We'll worry about margins and styling a little bit later. At the desktop breakpoint, I could also modify this to remove the right side margin. You can see with the bounding box that there's a little bit of additional space there that I don't necessarily need. Let's go ahead and remove that now. I'm just gonna select my item. Again, I'm at the desktop breakpoint and I'm going to remove my right margin here that I've already placed. And instead, when I go to the next lower breakpoint, I'm going to insert it. I'm gonna make it a little bit bigger because I wanna see what it looks like at this level. And we'll have a look at that in a minute and see what impact that has and below. So that's actually looking spacing wise, visually not too shabby. Let's give it another behavioral check. I can hover, I can hover, I can hover. I can go to my home page. If I change to a mobile view, not bad. That 10 did push the text out of alignment, which basically means that for this particular menu item, we're gonna to need to make sure that we've adjusted for that extra four or five pixels. We'll have a look at that styling in a minute and see what's going on. So let's actually turn off our preview mode. Let's edit our symbol. Let's go in. Let's expand our menu. Let's have a little look see at what's going on here. Now you can see these items, these navigational links, have a left side margin. And that this navigational link, which is our icon navigational link, does not and that would be the reason that it's behaving a little bit differently, and that's totally fine. Now, for the purposes of what we're doing here, we'll just have a quick look at what's what's going on here. Uh, for our navigation link, I don't see anything on the left side. Let's have a look at its wrapper. Don't see anything there either. What's the immediate? There we go. So our drop down has a left side margin of 20 and no interior margin. And we've got an inside margin of 20 as well. 
inside the navigation link. So we've got 20 uh, outside and 20 inside. We want to make sure it's 40 to the text here as well. But of course, we in that 40, we want to be able to fit our 16 by 16 icon. I think to make that simple, I'm just going to give it a margin of about 10 and subtract 16. So we're going to subtract 26 from our 40. And therefore, what we want for our uh, uh, both the outside and the inside, it's going to be half of that, 13. Let's go ahead and configure that. Now here we're going to actually configure it all at one block because it's a single block uh, sized object. So we're going to drop this down to 16. And we want to take it off of current again, make sure we're editing the right thing. Change that to 16. And we've got 16 here. Uh, we've got 10 there. So it's 26. We've got nothing on our left hand side. Let's actually adjust that a little bit more. My math may have been a little bit off. 16 plus 10, 26, 40 is 13. Ah, we want this to be 13. That's where my math is wrong. And again, I notice it's reselected current. So let's go back. So make that 13. That should look a little better. That looks pretty aligned. Now for our purposes, that's 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 good enough. Uh, we can obviously get a lot more precise. We can obviously reconsider the coloring of the icon. Um, if you really wanted to have the, the color of the icon change between your desktop view and your mobile view, the way to do that would be to simply have two icons and then choose their visibility accordingly. And those two icons would have different colors until the day that SVG becomes programmable through uh, inheriting Webflow's CSS style settings. So let's close our menu. Let's go back to the main menu. And we've basically got everything in play that we need to do. Let's do one final run through. We've got our, our home main button. We've got our navigation working. If we go to a mobile view, that's functioning. Back to home. Obviously, we wanted to do some styling and, and color views. And you can see that you need to check each of the different breakpoints because they probably have different default styling. We've run into that here. In this case, what we would need to do is further indent these to give them a full 40 as well. Let's have a look at our smaller view. Yeah. Essentially, this is what we're running to, or you could line it up in any different way that, that suits your purposes. But this is the basic design that I really favor for iconifying my main menu, and I hope it's been useful to you.